welcome. I'm kind of singing along with I Love to Laugh. I love that song. That's one of my favorite songs. In fact, before we started the show, Andrew said, so you want to use that one, or do you want to use the one from Singing in the Rain with, you know, God to laugh, God, and anyway. Hi, welcome to today's Village in Motion. I'm Diane Gatz's having a, and we are celebrating International Laughter Day, and it is Wednesday, May 11th, and it was actually last Sunday, but you know, we don't do a show on Sunday, so we decided let's do it on Wednesday. And we teamed up with our community resources team to produce this show, and they're gonna share what they found out a little bit later in the show, but I am just thrilled and happy and laughing <laughs> that I have someone who equally shares my enthusiasm for laughter. Elaine Sorensen, which, who has been around Green Spring a little bit longer than me, but uh, <laughs> I just found out recently that you're almost a laughing expert, Elaine. Well, not exactly, although I love to laugh, and um, I, I, in fact, when I was growing up, everybody said ladies should chuckle, they shouldn't laugh, and I have a loud whatever explosive kind of a laugh. So I was, I was, uh, I used to be a little embarrassed about it. But then years later, many, many, many years later, when I got involved with some of the research about laughter, Dr. William Fry, who was sometimes called, talked about as the grandfather of the laughter theory, said to me, you have a million dollar laugh, don't hide it. And from then on, I just thought, good, I'm just gonna laugh, so. Good, and we're gonna talk about the health benefits, because this is serious stuff. I mean, there are people who study laughter and the benefits mm -hmm. of laughter, and Elaine is gonna help share that information with us. So on one hand, yeah, we're gonna be really silly, and I may throw on different types of hats. <laughs> this is my latest toy. I actually came to work about a week ago, and someone had left this on my desk. I guess <laughs> they knew it was gonna be a good home, because if you've ever been at Channel 6, you know my desk is full of all sorts of little um, toys I like, I like to collect, and I brought some on the set to share with you. But laughing is something, especially as we age, mm -hmm. it's really beneficial, and one of the reasons is the whole breathing aspect. So let's, let's just go ahead and get started. Be serious at the beginning of the program, and we'll be sillier, how about towards the end? Does that make sense, Elaine? Sure. Okay, so there are actually five secrets of laughter which I discovered. Oh, well, tell us about okay, that. Okay, so let's talk with, about the first secret. So the first secret of laughing, and this is laughing for no reason, because one of the great benefits of laughing is you, it doesn't have to be real. I mean, you know, like sometimes mm -hmm. someone tells you a joke and you laugh, and sometimes someone tells you a joke and you pretend to laugh. So that doesn't matter. The pretending is just as beneficial as the real stuff. And that's why I think it's so important that uh, laughing each and every day. Mm -hmm. So the first secret is we don't need a sense of humor to laugh. True. So what, what I mean, what's the difference between a sense of humor and just? Well, I think some people are born with a kind of what we call a wit. They do, their mind just processes information in a way that's kind of silly or creative or whatever you want to call it. And for them, uh, there's no question about, uh, they don't hesitate, like I mentioned, that I would feel silly about laughing. They just do it because it's part of their nature. And some people don't have that kind of a talent or characteristic, and they're, they feel a little bit more self-conscious. So I think it's good to get rid of that, that self-consciousness and just realize, just relax and laugh. Like the, the guy in Mary Poppins who mm -hmm. <coughs> sat there and just laughed and, and laughed. Well, in fact, uh, a little bit later I'll review some of the history with it, but go on with your review. Okay, so the second, second secret to laughing for no reason is motion creates emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what does that mean, motion? Well, that means that your body is connected, body and, and your, your, your psyche, your emotions, your physical well-being, all of these things work together as a system, and systems are coordinated whether we know it or not. So I'm also thinking it has to do with our breathing. Well, it has to do with the fact that there are centers in our brain that motivate certain reactions. 
and that when that happens, it, it just goes through your body, through one system, to, through the other. They, they're interrelated. So that you may not realize that when you, uh, say, even smile, you have triggered something that's going to send signals to the rest of your body. And smiling is just as important as laughing, right? Maybe not just as, but it sure is important. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the third secret for laughing for no reason. You can laugh even if you aren't happy. Mm -hmm. That sounds like, why would someone laugh if they're... You well, know? years ago, in fact, I'm going to deviate now and talk about some of the right. history of this. Okay. Uh, you've got to remember that back after the war, there is a big change in everything going on in our country. The more, more di discoveries or changes occurred after the war, partly because of the uh, efforts to do the moon shot and the moon landing, where people realized we had to start thinking out of the outside the box. And instead of single disciplinary approaches to answers to questions, there was much more the interdisciplinary approach. Uh, I got involved, fortunately, accidentally, in, 19, in the 1960s, late 1960s, 64, 65, I was a research and training director for the National Institute of Mental Health. And I was doing a research grant at the Mental Research Institute in Palo Alto with Stanford and with the Menlo Park VA. Again, that was an example of interdisciplinary looking outside the box. Uh, we were, uh, one of the focuses, one focus was on veterans, of course, with the VA, uh, but it was also in terms of the general public. And uh, looking, uh, the Meta Research Institute was looking at things like acupuncture, for example, uh, yoga, for example, biofeedback, looking at testing and researching. Uh, what goes on in terms of your mind and your body and how can you stimulate certain things that are good for you? One of the people was Don Jackson, who was the, considered at that time one of the 10 uh, best <coughs> psychiatrists in the country. Virginia Satir was there also talking about interdisciplinary relationships. And Dr. William Fry, a clinical psychologist from Stanford, was also part of their group, a lot of many other people. But he was the one who decided that laughter was important and the physiological effects were so important that it, it uh, was worthy of research, actual clinical research. And so he submitted the first grant. And that was in the 1960s. And he, uh, because of some of his research, other, you got to realize also, this is going on across the, around the world. It wasn't just one place, but in the United States, in California, this kind of took off. And um, about the same time, Norman Cousins, who, who was a philosopher of that time and very important, was talking about laughter was the one thing that gave him pain relief uh, when he was struggling to uh, recover from cancer and, and beat that ball. At the same time, down at the Loma Linda Medical Center, this is where uh, the, their research there in California, their research determined that the body cannot tell genuine, genuine from simulated laughter. That was the first time that that was actually <coughs> a, a delineated in the laboratory. Then another PhD student in Santa Barbara developed, uh, based on that, the voluntary simulated laughter training. So, and Virginia Satir was another one of those, and we talked about that before. Then you can go on into the 70s, and there was Dr. Uh, Patch Adams, who, uh, by the way, came from the Washington area, D.C. area, and uh, he had this whole idea of uh, people would recover better in the hospital. He was a, a bon uh, an absolute uh, medical doctor. Sometimes people think, no, he was just a clown, but he had clown training. And he believed that that, uh, that, would, uh, would, uh, that humor would uh, help people recover. And it proved to be true. And he also was the person who uh, got people started with, with um, the Big Apple Circus. The clowns from the Big Apple Circus would come to the hospitals and help, especially with the children. 
And just to show you what kind of a sense of humor he had, he called his clinic the Gesundheit Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> so that finally we got ourselves back to 1976 when they had the first convention of humor scholars. And at that convention, they decided that they would call themselves the gelat gelatologists. I can't even say this, <laughs> after the Greek god Jelos, who was the god of laughter. And, and then, in it, you know, I have to just say, see, the Greeks started everything. everything. There you go. <laughs> and in 1987, they had the first International Society for Humor Studies. So that's a quick historical review of how it, uh, people around the world were, I mean, they were starting to say that we've got to look at the connection of mind and body and the fact that we have some control over some of the things that we do in our lifetime. Um, okay, and we, we saw a little bit of Patch Adams, um, the movie, with um, the wonderful, and I can't even think Robin. of Robin Williams, mm -hmm. who if, if, if he couldn't get you to laugh, I don't know who could. But um, so we talked about um, you can laugh even if you're not happy. The fourth secret of laughing for no reason is to cultivate childlike playfulness. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they mean by that, Elaine. I mean, well, it's, it means different <laughs> things to different people. Okay. Because uh, again, there isn't any one size fits all. It's just the idea to give yourself permission. Uh, we all have that child inside of us; it never leaves. It just gets more disciplined, as you will, as we age in place. Like people telling you you shouldn't be laughing yes, because exactly. ladies aren't supposed to right. laugh out loud, mm -hmm. or sometimes you're in a public place and there's some guy or gal laughing and laughing, and people go, "What person over there?" Well, and sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes. Uh, it can be inappropriate, too. Uh, it is important to realize that uh, extremes are never very good in any direction, being too quiet or too loud. And so, yeah, but you soon get to be comfortable with what fits for you that fits for the environment in which you find yourself. And sometimes we get to be too, uh, too structured. And uh, it's okay to give your, the child in you permission to come out and play. <laughs> you know? so. Okay, so be before we talk a little bit more about that, about how we can play, the fifth secret of laughing for no reason is you can train your body and mind to laugh, which kind of gets back into mm -hmm. what we've already been talking mm -hmm. about. And I think the best example, if you can't, you know, just start laughing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you could, in the privacy of your own home. Absolutely. You could just sit and get naked, as I want to say, mm -hmm. and look at yourself in the mirror. And I'm thinking most of us would just start laughing because our bodies or are we probably may start crying. We may be doing be so both. Good. Okay, <laughs> so maybe you shouldn't get totally naked. But um, but the experts do say get a mirror, stand in front of the mirror, and just start laughing. Well, and if you don't, if that is not the first step for you, and it might not be for a lot of people, one of the things you can do is buy a humor book. Just sit and there are, even the Reader's Digest every year, every month has their, their jokes to laugh at. There are jokes on the internet. You can read these and, and uh, you know, just laugh and chuckle to yourself. And sometimes you tell them to your friends at the dining room table, like Bob Z does. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can start with simple little things like that. And remember what I said the other day. Um, you can, Virginia Satir used to train people to say, if you don't feel like laughing, that's okay. Do it, it the feeling will come later. <laughs> and she used to say, now, you know, if nothing else, just go like this, you know, and well, you just watch this group do like this and you start laughing. But it, it is, uh, it, for some people it's not spontaneous, but that even doing it in an unspontaneous way is, believe it or not, triggers some of the positive things because the research indicated your, mind, your body and mind do not know the difference if you're going through the motions. So we're going to take a pause in our discussion. So Community Resources, Anita Goffrell and Kelly, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce her name, but it would be pretty funny because I would butcher it and everyone would laugh. Uh, <laughs> I can't even think. What's her last name? What? 
Bob, do you know anyone? Lou Shander. Lou Shander. If that isn't a name to laugh at, I don't know what. I'm not laughing at you, Kelly. I'm laughing with you. But anyway, she went out with um, Avon Price into the community and uh, talked to various residents about laughing. So let's take a moment and look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, pardon my laugh, but I can't help it. Sometimes just walking around Greenspring, you'll catch something that makes you laugh or somebody will be smiling. <laughs> so on this National Laughter Day, we're going around Greenspring to see what really makes people laugh. They got good stories or just what do they find funny? Let's check it out. <laughs> I want to know, do you know any good jokes? Oh, good jokes? Yeah, tell me a joke. Yes, I do know a very good joke. Let's hear there, it. Was, uh, there was there uh, was this car was driving down the road and the policeman had to stop and say, tell this lady that she was driving too slow. And he said, you're only going 25, 22 miles an hour. And she said, well, that's what the sign says right up there. And he said, no, that's Highway 22. Oh, and he said, what's the matter with these ladies in the back seat? They don't look well at all. So well, we just got off Highway 95. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. I like it. Can't think Can that I, fast. I'm trying to keep the line dance one? in my head. Go ahead. Oh, are you sure? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. What do you call a nosy pepper? A nosy pepper. <laughs> no, this is just a regular one line joke. Okay. What's the difference between snowmen and snow ladies? Snowballs. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Jalapeno business. <laughs> Precious. Good. I'm gonna remember that one, so you ask me next time. Okay, see you Linda. Okay. This is for everybody that um, wants to just chuckle today. Okay, how how will you know who is your best friend? Is it your dog? Or is it your best friend, like like Kelly here? And, and so here's what I would do just to test it out. I would put them both in the trunk and drive around for a couple of hours and then open the trunk and see who's happy to see me. <laughs> would it be the dog or would it be Kelly? It's not going to be me. That's how you know who your best friend is. <laughs> That's, That's a good, a good Happy one. laughter day. That's good. <laughs> Do I know a good joke? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear one. Well, have you heard the one about the mother who was knocking on her son's door and yeah. said, son, it's time to get up and go to, the, go to school. And this voice inside of the bedroom said, I'm not going to school. They hate me and I hate them and I'm not going to go and you can't make me go. And Mother said, well, there's two reasons why I think you should go. First, you're 57 years old. Secondly, you're the principal. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That was a good That's one, good, Bob. Bob. Well, you want, can I tell you a joke? You can tell me okay. a joke, yeah. All right, knock, knock. Who's there? Control freak. Control well, freak. You say, control freak who? <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> I guess it wasn't that good. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> One more for you that are on National Laughter Day that want to laugh. Okay, why is a milking stool, why does a milking stool only have three legs? Kelly? Kelly doesn't know because the cow has the other one. <laughs> good one, huh? Franklin, can you tell us a joke? I sure can. You ready? Yes. All right. Why can't a back bike stand on its own? Why? Because it's too tired. Tell me, do you know any jokes? Do you like to laugh? Oh, I, I got, I got, a, I got a long one. Let's hear it. Okay, look. This guy had lost his job, so about two or three weeks. 
he was looking in the papers, looking in the papers for his job. And he seen this one ad at the zoo. So he said, uh, my car no do, you know, my bills are due. Let me go see what's going on. So he went down there and they said, hey, uh, our gorilla is sick. We need somebody to put a gorilla suit on, jump up and around in the cage until they get well. He said, man, I don't know. He said, look, we're paying 15 off now. He said, okay, okay. So he put the suit on. Next day, he jumped up and down in his you know, cage. And a week or two, three weeks went past. The guy said, man, the crowd is coming. And you get, you know, it's a great crowd. I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. So he did it for another two weeks. And the boss said, look, the crowd, so many people's coming in to see you. We're going to give you a raise. He said, go ahead. He said, yeah, we're going to give you a $20 raise. He said, $20? He said, that's great. So he was so excited the next day, he went and put the suit on. He jumping up around, jumping around, and he seen this rope hanging from the ceiling. So he grabbed the rope and was swinging and swinging. Everybody started clapping, yeah, yeah, swinging. And he went back one time and hit the wall and swing and boom, bust the wall into the lion's cage. The lion jumped up, arr, arr. He started screaming, help, get me out of here, help, get me out of here. The lion walked up to him, shut up, fool, for get both of us fired. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, excuse me, <clears throat> Elaine, you said something while we were watching this that I'd like you to repeat. I said, isn't it wonderful how many people have a joke to tell? So it gives you an idea that all you have to do, at a, for example, at the dinner table is say, who's got a joke now? Or, you know, is there's humor and people are willing to share it. It's just our, we need a little, a little help. And I know there's a lot of stages of laughter, and we won't go into the whole thing, but you know, the, the bottom of the list is the, the so-called physical laughter, which we've all seen. You know, the guy walking down the street slips on the banana, he falls. We're not supposed to really laugh, but we're all sitting there going, ah, yeah. that's pretty funny, you what an idiot, you know? And then we might go and say, oh, can I help you, are you okay? And then there's more as it goes up, it's the whole, um, you know, satire and, and I think maybe using that wit that you were talking about mm -hmm. and, and developing more yeah. of well, that not, concept. I wouldn't say it goes up, I would say it goes sideways. Oh, okay. It's a range and one isn't any better than the other. It's not, it's just they're different and one, one is, is, is more appropriate in different circumstances. But I think the idea that um, you were saying the other day that uh, we need, you know, right now, everybody is, at Greenspring is really stressed about a lot of things. The world around us is very, very stressful. There are a lot of changes, which as we age, we find difficult to handle. Uh, I think it's the perfect time for us to give ourselves permission to just relax a little with it and share a laugh with each other. And, and minimize the stresses in, to our, in our body. And we, we really, not only in terms of, we talked about the physical benefits and, and, and the emotional mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it really is true. I think if you wake up and, you know, the last 15 days, my God, it's, you go out, you know, you look outside and you go. Right. Oh, this is, this is, you know, I don't want to And it's allergy deal. time besides. And, and allergy, and we're all just sitting there going, oh my God, it's so gloomy and gross, and you know, I'll just go back to sleep. But if, if we pretty much raise ourselves up and really start to smile, I, I think you do get that, that lift of, oh, I'm smiling, something's going on. And then if we add the laughter, it gives you also that whole physical benefit mm -hmm. because it allows us to breathe not only more air in, but more importantly, to breathe out the yuck of the, you right, know, of right. the body. And that was one of the things they incorporated when they would do Tai Chi laughter or yoga laughter. It's the whole combination that one enhances the other. Um, so we're, we're, we're narrowing our discussion down. And before, I know she, Elaine has a joke, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> but before we get into that, anything, well, you have, you're starting a new, is it a new club, a new group, well, yes, or what are you going to? It's a, a movement, if a you will. A movement, all right, I like movement. <laughs> but we're calling it uh, the 2H Club, and the H can be for happiness and health, or the H can be for high fives or hugs. And so what we're trying to do now, we're in the process of designing some little buttons that we can wear 
and we're going to give them out to staff and residents. And this club has no dues and no meetings, but the days that you feel like you need a little laugh or a little lift, you wear your pin. And if you want a hi-fi or, or a bump, you wear the, the blue pin. If you are open to having a hug, you wear the red pin. And so it's just funny, it's not serious, but it's, uh, it also can have health benefits, emotional benefits for us. So. And, and why the touch? I mean, it's... Well, we, as we age in place, that's all part of the keeping the body alert and stimulated and so on. And touch is so important. And as we age, we are, our circles of people are smaller and smaller. And some people don't have any, any touch with anybody else uh, throughout the day. And so that, that's all part of this idea of getting together, uh, just giving yourself permission to feel connected to the world in which you're living. They can come to Channel 6 anytime, and we, we give out free hugs. Well, and you know, <laughs> hugs aren't for everybody. That's okay. You've got to be where you are, because if you're not centered enough to know that and, and be comfortable with that, that's a problem, too. And again, you don't have to be like everybody else, but the important thing is to find a way that you can give yourself permission to relax and have a little joy in your life. I have an aunt who's um, my last, uh, I have two aunts remaining, but she's um, on my mother's side of the family. And she and now her daughter give the absolute best hugs. You mm -hmm. know you are hugged when you're hugged by my mm -hmm. Aunt Martha. Oh. <laughs> and when my kids come to visit, we all have to go to Aunt Martha and get our hugs yeah. because mm -hmm. that gets us through the next time before we get to visit with her. It, so. it does. It really does help you. So uh, as, there's research, as we said before, it's not just silliness. It's, it makes you feel good, but there's actually research to demonstrate it's health, it has health benefits. And as you said, you can watch um, funny movies. There are, you know, the people who, with the serious illnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was Norman Cousins. He used to just watch funny old movies at the um, continuously, yeah. and, and you can force yourself to laugh that way. Also, I understand. But don't say force yourself. No, okay. Just because I think it's to let the laugh come out. Well, that's a good way to put it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and animal videos. Mm -hmm. Well, and having a pet is the same kind of thing. They're so silly you watch them. I watch the pandas. If you ever do on, on, on my the, computer. The, the panda camera. Oh, they do the funniest things rolling down the hill. And, you know, I mean, there are just all kinds of things like that that you can do that help you to relax and just enjoy. Yeah, just the other day they announced there were uh, leopard tripper, triplets. And I w Paulette and I were watching it on, on um, YouTube. And I was like, I want one of those. And she's like, yeah, what are you going to do when they get bigger? I said, I don't care. I want one of those. And um, so, but I won't get one of those. I'm going to have you save your joke. First, I'm going to go to the announcements.